But what I'm interested in is the seed inside you. There you are in England, and then you're in the great English theater, albeit on a lower rung. But there's no voice for Eric, there's no voice for Eric's history, there's no voice for Eric's country, there's no voice for Eric's people, and he seems to be okay with that. And then that's, that spark gets struck in you when you came back. So were you missing that in England, or did you know that you were I missing it? I don't think I know it. It didn't no. even occur to you. I wouldn't have left England had I not been booted out. And that was, um, I'm trying to think of his name. The North Irish guy, um, um, terrible man, Enoch Powell. He made a big stink about the Kenyans, the, you know, the uh, South Asian Kenyans who, you know, who all had British passports suddenly getting kicked out by Indian men coming to England. And how this was terrible, all these always colonial with their passports, with their British passports coming to live in Britain. And so I got sort of swept up in people being kicked out. So I was just on a work permit. I hadn't emigrated that I kept extending. And I one they just said no. Finally, I got one. You must be. This must be presented by a certain date, or you will be illegally in this country. So I came home, and I don't think I still came home with the idea that my great thing would be to return to England and be a famous English actor, not American English actor. And how long did that last? Or did you do you still? Well, I ran into Paul Thompson. Right. I, uh, that's where the story comes. I go, and suddenly I went, my God. And I didn't even do that. But I gave up this whole idea about being rich and famous and the, and the whole career aspect of it. I mean, it, to a certain extent, gave it up. Because it was too much goddamn fun driving around in the van and doing these plays and having this kind of feedback that you got. It was like, and we just, you know, we were young, hard-drinking, no, and you felt, and again, something. Thompson gave you some kind of thing that was so wonderful that you were part of something, as opposed to, you know, as opposed to uh, that you could love. I mean, as I, if I want to counter it with the self-loathing that a colonial person has. So I'm not going to England to be rich and famous. I'm not going to America to be rich and famous. I'm really going so I don't have to be Canadian and have to view myself in those terms. I'm going to go and be somebody else, some other nation. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yep. And so this was, to me, it made me, I'm not a happy person, but it made me much happier to be this. And it, well, all I can say is, creatively, it was, it, it was an explosion to me. And yeah. I mean, that's where, you know, Billy Bishop Close to War came out of that idea. That but we could the take voices that you speak, through your characters, whether it's Billy Bishop or whether it's William Lyle McKenzie or whether it's the guy in Seeds, the voices that you speak and the guy in Half-Life are so important to Eric that that voice have ownership in this land and that artist and that actor. And that's part of the kind of voltage that comes up through your performances. Now, you didn't have that in England playing the constable, but you discovered that scene. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry. I don't sorry. think you probably did. Take a leap there. I, did, I didn't get any mention in the review that I have to admit. <laughs> do you have any press from that time that you keep in your... I, I do have a poster, though, with my name. 